Hello YouTube, welcome back to the channel. Stacking Perpetrator here. In this video, I'm going to do my thoughts on on uh, buying slab, high grade slab coins like this MS6581S uh, PCGS versus adding some low grade what some people would consider cast offs to the melt thing just because it's worn out and slicked out. And uh, I just want to touch on that a little bit because I've seen several videos from some content providers talking about picking up your low grade coins like these 84 S's that I did a video on that I got out of a junk bin at one of my LCS's. These are the 84S. These are, for 3.2 million mintage, your high grades, once you once you get into MS60, these things are just out of sight. Actually, it starts a huge jump at AU, uh, AU50. And these are, I mean, 3.2 million mintage. I did a scaly do on eBay, and I came up with, on the 84S, I came up with 750 listings. That's everything from a low-grade coin to a high-grade slab coin in those 750 listings. So it's you have the full spectrum to choose from. But when you think about a 3.2 3, 3 .2 million mintage on this 84S, and there's only 750 listings, raw, low-grade through high-grade slab coins. 750 is a drop in a bucket for there being a mintage of 3.2 million for this coin. So, what we kind of want to talk about is, you know, I know there's some people, it's like, should you should you buy just a high grade, high grade examples, you know, kind of like this, this uh, 1930 Standing Liberty Quarter that I picked up at my LCS. Very nice looking coin. I mean, I understand if you want to, if you just want high grade examples in your collection of coins, but if you're putting a date and a mint mark set together, you know, I got news for you. You're not going to be able, the average and I'm talking the average collector, just your regular run-of-the-mill coin collector. They're not going to be able to afford an MS63 84S. They're just not going to be able to afford it. it. It's just the price is just out of sight. So you have to rely on this. I've I, now I've seen channels talking about buying everything from key dates, semi-key dates, and better dates in whatever condition they can get them in and setting those aside. And then I see other channels that are only, they want high-grade examples, okay? I'm not saying that's bad. I'm not saying buying low-grade coins are bad. I just want to have a discussion, and I think it's good to actually have both. Yes, it's nice to pull out your collection and and look at a high grade coin, but if it's just a common day coin, even though it's high grade, if it's a common coin, they're going to be cheap. They're not. You know, they're not going to be unobtainable by your average collector. But at the same time, your average collector who's putting a date and a mint mark set together, they're not going to be able, your average run-of-the-mill collector, like me, like you, like a bunch of other people, you're, they're not going to be able to buy an 84S in MS65 condition. One, you're, you're probably not going to... You, you know, you're going to have a hard time tracking it down to, to, to find it, to buy it in the first place. But 
you should really think about putting some of these lower grade coins. Yeah, they, they're worn. But, you know, there's something to consider too. I kind of like these better than I do the high grade example. Yeah, this looks nice. It's all the details and everything. But this coin in this MS-65, this never circulated. This went from a mint to a bag to a bank vault. And it sat there and sat there and sat there. And it might have went to another bank, got transferred to another bank where they put it in their vault. And it sat there and sat there until it got it, it got released to the public. <clears throat> These coins, on the other hand, <coughs> because they're worn, these were circulated. These have the history behind them in the mystery. Who handled these coins? Did a president of the United States handle this coin at one time or another? Whoever, you know, that was. I'm not the history buff. You know, did a famous outlaw handle this coin? Was this coin involved in a bank robbery, a train robbery? Um, was it was it part of a stagecoach robbery? Was it a small town bank robbery out west? Who actually held these coins? Who spent these coins? How many times was this coin spent at a store or at a saloon or whatever? You know, this has the mystery behind it. Now, what I paid for these two, I paid the same amount of money to get this MS6284. The problem is the 840 has a higher mintage. It has a higher mintage. So its value is not as because more of these are graded in higher grade. So it doesn't have the value. If I ever go to sell, I would guarantee that my 84S is these would sell faster than this coin because this coin is more common. It's, it's much more common in MS-62. You'll, you'll find this a whole lot easier than you will the 84S. And if you find it in this grade, more than likely you're not going to be able to afford it. So, you know, think about, you know, you should really think about, even if you're doing, you know, if you want to just do high grade thing, yeah, I'm not knocking that. I'm happy for you. You know, I've seen some really awesome collections on YouTube where all the coins are slab. But at the same time, you might want to think about if you run across these, picking some of these up and put them back and hang on to them because these will always be sought after by collectors trying to put a set together on your better dates, your key dates, your semi-key dates. This this worn, slicked out, 1869 seated, seated Liberty Quarter, this is one of my top five favorite coins in my collection. One, because I got it out of a junk bin, didn't realize I just saw a seated quarter, ah, throw it out, I'll throw it in my in my uh, stacking side in, in a tube for my stack. And then I get home and realize 1869. If I look in the book, if it's a Philadelphia, they only minted 16,000 of them. If it's the S, they only minted 76,000. We have no idea how many of these survived. Very few. So should we melt this? Should I send this off to be melted because it's because it's an ugly looking coin and it's slicked out or as a collector should I preserve this while it's in my possession so that a future generations can at least enjoy this because if this gets sent off to the melter and this I saved this from a box that was scheduled to go to the smelter I am hoping to determine if it's the Philadelphia or the asset at one point 
but for right now i just i just don't know but this is one of my top five favorites let's look at my type set real quick i'm gonna push out a coin here's another one if you're collecting indian heads this is what i have in my type set this is the 1877 it's worn and this is a legitimate coin we'll look at the reverse if you know your indian head your ver your the way to verify that you have a legitimate 77 is these were weakly struck in the center so the bottom portion of the end in one is worn or wasn't struck good really good and then the the end in the upper left corner of the end and scent is also wasn't struck very well let me see if i can loop it and get a better get used to this it's almost better with just doing the just doing the regular camera but that's how you that's how you verify you look at your end the end in one is weakly struck in the lower portion and the end in scent the top left corner of the end is weakly struck that's your key your key point to verify you have a legitimate 1877 Indian head. But because this coin is worn, Liberty in the headband is not visible. Um, part of the wording around, you know, United States is about worn out. Should we just, I mean, this is a key coin to the Indian head scent. Should I just cast this off and melt it down for the copper because it's worn down? Or should I preserve this coin and put it in my typeset and enjoy the fact that I actually own one? Because I'm telling you, I was lucky to be able to acquire this coin. Anything higher than this, and it's just out of my price. It's just new. I, don't, I just can't afford it. But I have this coin in here, and I'm proud to own it. It's it's fits the Indian head scent slot for the 1864 to 1909. It fills my spot. But should I just toss that coin aside because it's worn and not very, not very attractive coin? Or should I preserve it so that, so that future generations can enjoy it? Anyways, let me know your thoughts down below. Are you just stacking the, the pristine coins? Or do you occasionally buy some key, some low grade key date, semi keys, better dates to put back, you know, or, you know, are you just, are you just interested in high grade examples that never saw circulation or very little circulation? You know, there's all kinds of collectors out there. Well, not every you know, your average everyday numismatic coin collector is not going to be able to afford an 84S in MS65 condition. They're just not, you know, they're not going to be able to do it. They're not going to be able to do it. But down the road, if I ever need to sell, like I said, if I put these two coins up for sale, and I put this MS, this 84O 62, I'd be willing to bet I'd sell my 84S's. I'd have more inquiries about buying the 84S 
than I would be buying somebody wanting to buy this 84O. Although this um, would have an unfair advantage because this is in one of the older soap bar holders. One of the later generations of the soap bar holder. So the holder itself is collectible. But chances are more people would be interested in getting that 84S than they would the 84O in a higher gray. Anyways, let me know your thoughts down below. I just thought I'd weigh in my opinion on this. Uh, let me know what you think, and we'll see you on another video.